Now, in their minds, they said, wait a minute, Jesus, but there's thousands of people out here. In fact, the scripture says that once he performed this miracle, 5,000 were fed, but that was 5,000 men. Now, you know it's usually twice as many women as it has been. Amen. Amen. So, that's thousands, more than 5,000 people out there. That's men, women, and children. And he fed all of them. But how did he do it? He did it with a seed. Somebody say, I have a seed. I have a seed. But here's the question. When Jesus asked for somebody to give them what they had, watch this. All the adults said, well, oh no, we ain't got nothing, we ain't got nothing, we got anything, we ain't got anything, we got anything. And then all of a sudden, let's pick up the story. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, hold up, there's a boy. Somebody say, a child. a child. Now, this is interesting because the story of feeding the 5,000 is in every one of the gospel accounts. How many gospel accounts are there? Four. What are they? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So it's found in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and even in the book of John. This is one of the few stories that's found in all four books. But here's the catch. The detail about the boy is only found in the book of John. So that tells you why you got to do more to get more, right? you got to study a little harder if you're going to get more information. If you read Matthew... You read the account. Mark and Luke, you read the account. But none of them talk about the little boy until you get to John. So now in John, we find out that the person who brought the two fish dinner, the two fishes and the, and the five loaves, was a little boy. You mean to tell me there was 5,000 men up there and none of them came forward and gave some seed so that Jesus could take the seed and bring it to the Father and that seed would multiply? Not on the boat. But the little boy said, hey, I got something, and let's pick it up. Andrew said, there's a little boy who has five barley loaves and two small fish. And two small fish. Say small fish. Oh. And listen to what the adults said who were thinking from their what? Mind. They said, but what are these among so many people? He ain't got nothing. He just got a little two-piece fish dinner. He ain't got nothing. We can't do nothing with that. Jesus can't do nothing with that. And what happened? The boy gave the two fish and the five loaves. Somebody say all. Oh. Now, now, now. If he'd been thinking like an adult, he'd have said, I have to hold on to this because these, these people ain't got no food up in here. I can put all eat. I got mine. How many people in the church feel just like that? I'm holding on to mine. I hear the man of God up there talking about Give me what you have, but I'm holding on to mine. I got to go after church. I got to go get me a fish dinner. I'm holding on to mine. But he gave all he had. And Jesus made an, a miraculous, abundant miracle out of a two-piece fish dinner. Can you believe that? Some bread. You know how you get that bread when you go. You know how you go to family fish and you get the fish and you get the little white bread. You know, you get the bread. So you have the bread and you have the fish. And Jesus made a miracle out of that, y'all. I said, He made a miracle out of that, y'all. And to pick it up at verse Mark 6:39, I told you it's also in Mark. Let's look at the rest of the story. In Mark 6:39, it says, He commanded them, meaning the adults to all recline, group right group on the green grass. In other words, he told, the, told them to get some seed. The little boy had childlike faith and gave him everything he had. Then Jesus took it. Now he's talking to the adults. They saw the example of the little boy, how he followed instructions. And so they started to go with the program. They're like, I don't know how Jesus is going to do it, but I think we better follow his instructions. Somebody said, I don't know how God's going to do it, no, 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 no. Say, I don't know, I don't know how, God how God is going to bless me with material abundance. With material abundance. But I'm going to follow his instruction. And guess what his first instruction was? Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. Some of y'all running around too much trying to make it happen. And he said, Sit down. Sit down under the word. Sit down under Jesus. He said, recline. In other words, get back, sit back, sit in the word, follow my instructions. He said, 
You follow my instruction, and I'll bring the abundance. Amen. You sit down. Stop trying to stop trying to make the whole situation happen in your own strength. You sit down and let Jesus do the work. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, I'm reclining right now, right now. under the word. He said, recline group by group hundred by 150. Now, none of this stuff makes sense. Why I gotta be a group of 50? Why I gotta be a group of 100? Now you know there were 12 apostles, right? Jesus is setting this thing up where he's got each apostle, every 12 every apostle has a group of people, some in groups of 50, some in groups of 100, and he takes the little boys two fish and five loaves, and he separates that and gives it to each apostle. Can you imagine? He said the fish were little. Did he say that? Yeah. Can you imagine? I thought about this. I said, now, if you got two fish and you got 12 apostles, do the math. For each fish, you got to break it up into six parts. Come on, somebody. Talk to me. Now, the fish was already little. So they got each apostle got a little bitty piece of a fish. Look what Jesus did. He took the five loaves. He took the fish. He looked up to heaven. He blessed it, broke the loaves, gave it to the disciples, set it before him. He divided the fish in two, and they all ate and were filled. Give God some praise. Now, when you don't have childlike faith, you be back there trying to figure out how you're going to do this. When you don't have childlike faith, you're looking at your bank account talking about, I don't know how the Lord can't do this. I don't know how he's going to do it. I mean, hey, I don't. You know, what, what's he going to do with that? What's it, what, what, you know, like my grandson does like this when he's trying to communicate to us and we don't understand. He does for us like this. <laughs> what, what you going to do with that, Lord? But childlike faith caused the little boy to give to Jesus. Childlike faith caused the Son of God to look to the heavens, to bless it and break it. And guess what? If you're in your mind, you're still trying to figure out how that miracle happened. But I ain't in my, I got out of my mind and got in my heart. And I said, Jesus did it. I don't know how, but in glory he'll let me know. But I know one thing. They were all filled, and the scripture said, and after they were all filled, they had 12 baskets left over that were filled. Are you hearing me? It was more than enough. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. But you have to have childlike faith. You have to trust him like a little child. You can't be sitting up there. You know, I, we have a saying in the world, I just can't wrap my head around that. But that's the problem. You're trying to wrap your head around that. You need to get out of your head and get into your heart and let God run your life based on the trust that's in your heart. As if you were a little child and you needed him totally. Give God some praise. You need to, you need to just really let it go. Church, I want to tell you this before I give you our example number two for the day. This is a very important point now. Very important point I'm getting ready to get you. Somebody say trust. trust. The problem with the church is we got trust issues. Okay, I was, I, I was wondering if this was the right section on here. Amen? I said the problem with the church is we got trust issues. And I want to, I want to tell you what they are. First of all, we got to learn how to trust God. See, you got to learn how to trust a God that you can't see. Did you notice that when Jesus got the fish and the loaves, he wanted to show them something. He, the son of God, son of man, looked up to what? Heaven. He was trying to show them who he was trusting. He was trusting God to put a blessing on that thing and multiply it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Jesus himself, he said he looked up to heaven and he gave thanks. Ooh, that's a great sign of trust. When you trust that, when you trust that somebody is truly going to do something for you and a blessing is on the way, what comes out your mouth? Thank you. Thank you. Pastor, I just sent you, I'm going to send you a check this week uh, just to bless you. But thank you. Thank you. Oh, bless you. I ain't got it yet, but I thank you. Because why? Because I trust you. I trust you. Amen. Somebody say trust the Father. 
So we got to learn how to trust God. Watch this, number two. We got to learn how to trust the leaders of God. Amen. Amen. Now, I know that's not a popular subject, but I want to show it to you scripturally because you know my saying, if I don't show it to you in the Bible, you don't have to believe it. Do you know who Jesus represented when he did that miracle? He represented God, and he called himself the Son of Man. Now, he was Son of God and Son of Man, but really, until he revealed himself as the Christ, which came at the end of his three-year ministry, all before that, he referred to himself as the Son of Man. To identify with us as a human, before he revealed his divinity, he presented his humanity. He wanted you to know that the same way he did things, you could do things. And what he was saying is, he trusted the Father, and the people had to learn to trust him who was receiving from the Father. So you got to learn to trust God, but you also have to learn to trust the man of God. Amen. I said you got to learn to trust the man of God. Amen. You know why? Because God is the one who appoints the man of God. The Bible says in Ephesians, I'm going to see who, who's been studying the Bible. He said in Ephesians 4 and 12, he gave, verse 4 and 11, he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and everybody to be a pastor teacher. Oh, only some there too? He says he gave some people, some men to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastor teachers. Now, if the Lord said, I didn't give everybody to be it, and he only gave some to be it, what he was saying is the ones who are it, he's the one that gave them to them, and he wants you to trust them because he gave them some. Are you, are you hearing me? He's the one that gave the church, the body of Christ, some. Say he gave some. Say some gifts to the body. And the reason he gave them is because He's in heaven, and he sent them down in the earth, and he wants you to trust him. Now, let me give you my last example. Old Testament. We talked about how Jesus represented man in the earth, son of man, and the, and, and, and the people, he was trying to get the people to trust him, but the little boy showed him the way. He trusted him. Well, there was a man in the Old Testament, his name was Naaman. Anybody ever heard of Naaman? He was, a, he was a general. He was a Syrian general. In other words, he was not a Jew. He was not one of the chosen people. But Naaman had a problem. He's like us. He had a physical problem. It, it, nobody gets through this earth without having some physical challenges. Can I get a wave off of Naaman? I said nobody gets through this life without having some physical sicknesses, ailments, or problems somewhere along the way. I don't care how holy and I don't care how much in faith you are. The Lord never promised that you wouldn't have a sickness. He said that if you had faith, you could believe to be healed from your sicknesses. Can I get an amen? So this guy, Naaman, he was he had a serious uh, physical problem. He was a leper. And leprosy was a terrible disease not only because uh, apparently it, it was very painful, but it was also very unsightly. You know, he had all these white sores and you know, people don't want to, you know, people would like my wife, they'd be, is that contagious? And she'd be like, I don't use food, I can't touch you. You know, I was like, honey, if I, if I had, you know, if I had a bad leprosy disease, I said, but you love me right here? She said, yeah, but that's contagious. I ain't fool with you. I, I pray for you from afar. That's my wife. Anyway, but Naaman was a, was a leper. And you find the story for homework in 2 Kings 5, 19, 9 through 14. 5, 19, 9 through 14. Let me tell you the story. Here's the point. You got to get this. General Naaman was a great general of a great army, but he had a problem. He had a physical sickness. He had leprosy. He was a leper. He had a disease. I'm not going to ask you what your physical problem is, but just about everybody at some point in their earthly life is going to go through some physical challenges. Amen. If you haven't gone through it yet, it's because you're young. Keep living. Amen. 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 Just keep living. You'll understand. I remember I, used to, I was at church and I used to hear my pastor talk about old age. And I was like, what is he talking about? What, what aches and pain? What is he talking about? Now nah, I know. Anyway, but so, so, so Naaman, 
was his leprosy. And he wanted to get rid of this leprosy because like anybody in the right mind is, I don't want to have to live with this. This is painful. This is unsightly. People don't want to be around me. And so he heard that there was a man of God. Like they say in the, in the old church, a man of God. Amen. And he heard that it was a man of God. And that man of God was a prophet. Somebody say he was one of the some. He was one of the some. Everybody's not a prophet, but God gave some. And he heard that there was a Jewish prophet named Elisha. And he said, I hear that this man is doing some miracles. He said, I don't care if he's a Jew, if he's a Negro, or whatever he is. I'm going to find this man, and I'm going to get him to heal me. Because I'm a general, but I'm tired of this sickness. I'm, I'm over here conquering all kinds of things, but this little thing in my body's got me defeated. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? You're doing all kinds of great things, but there's something going on in your body, and, and, and you're like, if you could just take this from me, Lord, I would be so happy. I'd be happier than beating the, the Russian army. Just take this out of my body. So he said, I'm going to go to this man. And I'm going to get him to help me because his track record is real good. And so he went with his servants to where Elisha was in Judea, in southern Israel. And he went there. And he knocked on the door. And he said, Elisha, he said, I'm Naaman, the general of the Syrian army, and I've come to be healed. And do you know what happened? Elisha responded to him but he didn't open the door. He didn't allow him to come into his house. He did not have a face-to-face -face -face meeting with him. But through the door, he told him, listen, here's what you do. Go down to the Jordan River. Dip yourself in the Jordan River seven times, and you shall be healed. Deuces. Bye. That's it. Yeah, let us say it. Do you realize what Nathan did after that? He was irate. He was fit to be tired. He was so upset. Like a lot of y'all might have been. He went away storming mad. And he told his servants, he said, man, he said, he said, I feel like I want to kill that guy. He said, how dare he? He doesn't know, he doesn't know who I am. I'm a general. I came down all this way, traveled all the way to get his blessing. All he had to do was open the door. All he had to do was strike his hands. All he had to do was say a blessing over me and bind his curse, and I would have been healed. He said, I, I, I just so upset. And then his servants said to him, said, Naaman, he said, well, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If he had told you to do some great thing like climb to the mountaintop, if he had told you to do some great thing like swim the Mediterranean, he said, would you have done it? He, he said, well, maybe that sounds like it makes more sense. He, but he just told me to go uh, wash in, in, in the Jordan River. He said, but in Syria, we have great rivers. Big, wonderful rivers. He told me to wash in some little river that's all dried up and muddy. He said, I, that just don't make no sense. And they said, but Naaman, but General Naaman. He said, peradventure, perhaps he is a man of God. And maybe what he's telling you, even though it makes no sense to your mind, Maybe if you do it, it may work. And they said to him, is it worth you trying so that you can be healed? And though he was angry, and though he was stomping around, though he was all mad, he calmed down a little bit because his servants had childlike faith and they were telling their boss something that their boss couldn't receive. What am I trying to tell you? They were telling him, listen to the man of God the one whom God has appointed, the one whom you went to see. You might not have liked what he said, but what he said might not have squared up, reconciled with your mind, but just followed it with your heart. And eventually, as he calmed down, he decided it's worth a risk, it's worth a try. Let me go down to the Jordan. He went down to the Jordan. He dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, and Naaman came out, and he was made whole. Give God Amen. some praise. Amen. Okay? I want to leave you with this today. God has put men of God, I'm one of them, into the earth. I'm not the only one, but I'm one of them. And sometimes he will have me to say something to you. 
that does not make sense to your mind. Oh, I heard pastor talk about this title thing. That I can't, I ain't, I ain't into that, I don't do that. You know, that doesn't make no sense. Sometimes they'll have me tell you something. Well, you know, you really, if you're a member of the church, you need to serve the church. Oh, no, no, no. See, I, I know pastor talking about that. But listen, you know, I, I ain't got time for that. I got to, you know, I, he don't understand the job I got. He don't understand the position I got. You know, just like Naaman, big, high, lifted up. I'm too big to lower myself to the foolish advice of the man of God. But remember, it's the man of God who's giving you the instructions from God. And if you open your heart and be like a child, tie to the Lord, you will be blessed. Serve the Lord in the house. You will be healed. Forgive your enemies. You will be lifted up. And like a child, you will thrive in the kingdom. My time is up, and I thank you for your Bless you be like a little child. You can miss God. You can miss your healing. You can miss your blessing. Heads about eyes and close, thanks for praying.